Neither rain nor lightning nor dark of night can prevent the River Valley Democrat Gazette from bringing you the most extensive high school sports coverage in the state. I'm Leland Barclay and this is the River Valley Sports Report sponsored by Ashley Air. And we certainly appreciate their support of this show and local high school sports, schools, and athletes. Friday night in Greenwood at Smith Robinson Stadium, the hometown Bulldogs trail Sebastian County rival Northside by 18 points with just four minutes left in the game. Northside quarterback Poom Zavoy had just scored on a 64-yard scamper right through the heart of the Greenwood defense that gave the Grizzlies a 53-35 lead with 4.02 left in the game. As Greenwood fans started filing out of the stadium, Grant Carnes returned the ensuing kickoff 74 yards to set the Bulldogs up at the north side 22-yard line. 55 seconds later, freshman quarterback Kane Archer, who was subbing for injured starter Hunter Houston, hit Peyton Presson with a four-yard touchdown pass that narrowed the gap to 53-42. Greenwood's defense made a defensive stand and forced Northside to punt with just 80 seconds left in the game. Greenwood then went 69 yards in 65 seconds with Javon Williams capping the six-play drive with a one-yard touchdown run. Archer added an important two-point conversion and Greenwood trailed just 53-50 with 15 seconds left. Senior linebacker Evan Williams gave the Bulldogs the shot they needed by recovering the onside kick at Northside's 45 with 14 seconds left. Williams also starts at linebacker and had 14 tackles in the game. He had this to say about the onside kick and the defensive stop earlier in the fourth quarter. So when you're when you're in that position, it's more just like you run just to hit them. There's a guy behind you that's more supposed to get the ball, but I just saw the ball hop up in the air, and then I just took the opportunity to jump and kind of made an illegal hit, but then took it to the ground, and got the ball back. So did you uh, did you see the ball pretty quick? Uh, it was kind of like a blur, and then I just kind of guessed where it was at, and it ended up being right. Of course, you're a starting linebacker too. The series where you guys held them and forced them to punt. How big a defensive series was that, and what did you guys talk about before going out for that series? Uh, we were really just telling everybody to keep their heads up and that it was going to be okay. Uh, we're we're going to bounce back. We got it from here. Uh, just the energy on the field on that drive is a bit different from the rest of the rest of the game. I mean, you guys really hadn't stopped them the whole game. What made you think that you might be able to stop them that time? I think we were just more mad at ourselves for how we let the crowd down. And we saw the fans filtering out of the stands, and we just decided that you know, now is our time to bow up and get big. After Williams' recovery, Archer scrambled out of bounds after gaining six yards to the 39 with seven seconds left. From the right hash mark, Archer stepped to his left and launched a pass deep to the left side where Grant Carnes caught the Hail Mary, turned and lunged into the end zone for the exciting conclusion in one of the most exciting games ever played in this area. Greenwood, in the last four minutes, had to score, get a defensive stop, score, get an onside kick, and then get the Hail Mary to complete the rally. Greenwood coach Chris Young had this to say about these Bulldogs and the come from behind win. Yeah, our demeanor was great throughout the night. You know, there were a lot of ups and downs. We got a chance to go 14-14 and have bad snap and don't handle the ball and it goes 21-7. Our kids didn't panic. Uh, came back and, and got 27-21. Uh, and then late in the game, you know, it's really not about winning the game at that point. It's about making that next play. We talked to our offense, I think, with a minute left and said, hey, we just need to go finish this drive. That's all we're focused on is finishing this drive. And they did it. And then we talked to the special teams about, hey, you got to make a play here. You get an onside kick. And they did that. And then, of course, the Hail Mary. So really just focus on the next play play one at a time and, and uh, you know the last one doesn't happen if the ones before it don't. Well and, and like you said it you know everything had to you almost had to be perfect the last four minutes 
And you were. Yeah, yeah. You don't tell the offense with one one minute left. Hey, we've got to score, get an onside kick, and score again to win the game. So it's really play by play, and just putting all of our effort in that play. Uh, and I thought our kids did a great job of focusing and, and just playing one play at a time. While the defense and special teams proved the difference in a game that had 145 offensive plays, 1,175 yards of offense, 55 first downs, and 15 touchdowns. A key play in the second quarter was also pivotal in Greenwood's win when Storm Sherry crashed through untouched and blocked a 33-yard field goal attempt by Northside. Sherry, who also starts a defensive back, had this to say about the blocked field goal attempt and the defensive stand late that set up the comeback. Well, you know, our coaches always tell us, you know, special teams can be the turning point in a game. That can be what can win a game. So we were all just really going all out, trying to block it. And uh, the guy I was on, he stepped down, left a wide open hole. So I just went for the ball. Yeah, because it looked like you had a pretty clean shot. Were you even touched on it? Uh, I wasn't, huh? I was free. <laughs> Did you get a, was it your hand or arm? Or? It was like my forearm, right forearm got the ball. Uh, of course, you play defense, too. Uh, same thing. What did you guys talk about before going out for that series? You know, we were just really trying to keep our composure the whole game and stay positive because things weren't going too well. And that last series, we all just bowed up and were able to make a stop. There were other headlines from Friday night from games, some delayed by lightning, like the Northside Greenwood game, and some not. Boonville kicked off late against Ozark in a rivalry game that the Bearcats won easily. Harold McElvain covered that game. Walter Woody covered Southside's 47-32 win over Van Buren as the Mavericks bounced back from the opening loss to rival Northside. Walter, Harold, and myself all tweet out final stats after our games that we cover each and every week. Friday night's game against Greenwood featured seven touchdowns just in the fourth quarter. So be sure and check the scoring summary, the complete stats, and everything that you won't find anywhere else from our games that we cover every Friday night. That's going to take us to halftime of the River Valley Sports Report after an exhaustive first half. Weather pending, we'll be right back after these words from our sponsor, Ashley Air, with Gimme Five. The Martins came over, we were having spaghetti When we suddenly noticed that we started getting sweaty As the temperature approached 90 degrees My buddy said, man, you gotta call Ashley AshleyAir.com When your air conditioner breaks, they're the one you want AshleyAir.com They're fast and they're good and they got it going on The technician showed up the very same day Got it fixed right and fast, he was on his way When your air conditioner breaks, you know who to call There's only one choice AshleyAir.com Give me five. These are the top five performances of the past week in the River Valley. Number one, we always start with the River Valley Player of the Week, which is sophomore Grant Carnes of Greenwood. Carnes caught the high school equivalent of the iconic catch made by Dwight Clark in the NFC Championship game in January of 1982 from Joe Montana that lifted San Francisco to a 28 27 win over the Dallas Cowboys. On Friday, Carnes caught nine passes for 228 yards and two touchdowns. He also returned two kickoffs for 99 yards and recovered an earlier onside kick by the Bulldogs. Number two, the Mountain Bird Dragons successfully opened the Zach Dean era with an 18 to 12 win over Danville. Dean took over after Tom Harrell retired after a 33-year career as head coach of the Dragons. This week, however, it gets tougher for the Dragons as they pay, play rival Cedarville in the Battle of North Crawford County. Number three, Southside bounced back from its opening loss to rival Northside with a 47-32 win against Van Buren. Cage Castling led Southside's defensive charge with two sacks and teamed up with John Parkinson for a safety. Devin Huggins intercepted two pass passes for the Mavericks. Isaac Gregory ran for 202 yards and three touchdowns, and Grayson York caught a touchdown pass, his fourth of the season. Number four, the Charleston Tigers opened the season with a road win, beating Elkins 42-22 with two quick touchdowns in the first quarter and three unanswered scores in the third quarter. Quarterback Brandon Scott completed 10 of 15 passes for 176 yards and a touchdown and ran for 156 yards and two scores. 
Number five, the Lavaca Golden Arrows opened the season with a 40-7 win over Magazine. Lavaca scored 27 points in the first quarter and led 33-0 by halftime. Fisher Martin recorded a first quarter safety for Lavaca, and the Golden Arrows defense allowed just 43 yards in the game. Now their game on Friday has been moved to Horatio, and Lavaca will now unveil its new turf in the home opener against Mount Ida on September the 19th. Check out every day of the Northwest Arkansas and River Valley Democrat Gazette where you will get Players of the Week, predictions, top performers, stats, schedule, scores, and capsules. Especially check out this past Sunday's edition of the River Valley Democrat Gazette where the big story was about Jerry Gladwell and his career at the Fort Smith Boys and Girls Club and the new director, Beth Presley. You can subscribe online at nwaonline.com and click the subscribe button or by calling our customer service line at 479-684-5509. Be sure to follow the River Valley Democrat Gazette Twitter account as well as mine, Walters, and Harold's. You can also view and purchase photos from our award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette photographers that can be seen and purchased on our website, nwaonline.com slash photo. That's going to wrap up this week's River Valley Sports Report. We'll leave you with more videos from Greenwood on Friday. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more updates like this. God bless you, and we will see you next week when we unveil the new plans for the River Valley Democrat Gazette section in each and every Sunday edition.